All right, I'll admit Paul from Teen Wolf News beat me on this topic, but I still wanted to make my own video as I was already planning on doing so for my audience. If you haven't already checked out his video yet, I highly recommend you do so. It's freaking hilarious. Anyway, welcome to the first video in the post Teen Wolf the movie era. My name is Jade, and if this is your first time here on the channel, I am an extremely hardcore MTV Jeff Davis era Teen Wolf fan, and I first came into the fan base in late 2015, early 2016 during the season five era of the show. I started this channel in mid 2017 and currently boast nearly 500 videos on this iteration of the franchise on the channel with the goal for this channel to end off as the definitive library of content for Jeff Davis's era of Teen Wolf. In today's video, we are gonna be talking about Eli Hale, a brand new character introduced in the film and the son of Derek Hale. The topic of today's video will be Eli and his overall existence, why it makes sense, and why most, if not all, of the Teen Wolf fan base online, at least, is incorrect when saying his existence is a retcon from Jeff Davis. Let's get into it. Let's lay some groundwork for what you should be aware of before watching this video. We'll start with things you should know. What you should know before watching this video is the overall timeline of the MTV Teen Wolf universe. If you don't know what happens or you haven't seen the show in a while and just forgot what takes place and when, I have an entire timeline video that's extremely detailed and it's the most detailed timeline video you're gonna find on YouTube. So watch that to pick up on your knowledge of all the events that took place during seasons one through six of the show i will be updating that timeline including all the events that took place in teen wolf the movie as well very soon look forward to that video in the future also before watching this video you should have at least seen teen wolf the movie at least one time i mean why would you watch a video about eli hale without watching the very thing he's introduced in makes no sense right go watch teen wolf the movie streaming right now on paramount plus and this is by no means a plug for paramount plus this is my own intake because i want to support the film as much as i can so we do get our Teen Wolf expanded cinematic universe and do get the full trilogy of Teen Wolf movies. It is currently the most successful Paramount Plus original film. So go watch it now so we can get more Teen Wolf and more stories in this wonderful universe. Getting into the meat of the video though, let's talk about Eli Hale's existence now that we have the prerequisites out of the way. So of course, as we all know, the Teen Wolf movie takes place in the year 2026, which is roughly about 11 years after that flash forward at the end of the Wolves of War and 15 years after the events of seasons one through three part two, which all take place in the year 2011. At the start of Teen Wolf the movie, we see Eli is already 15 years old. We don't find out who his mother is throughout the two hour and 20 minute duration of the film, but Jeff Davis, the brains and mastermind behind this version of Teen Wolf, has said in a recent interview that we won't find out the identity of Eli's mother until sometime in the future as he's saving that reveal for a future storyline down the road, hopefully in the sequel to Teen Wolf the movie or a spinoff please? Eli's existence is controversial because fans, for whatever reason, can't seem to make sense of his existence, even though it's very easy to explain. The main argument fans will use to call this decision to add Vince into the movie a retcon is, well, why didn't Derek tell Scott or the others about Eli's existence during any of the seasons of the show? Well, the answer is very simple. He did not know any of these people that well during the events of seasons one through three and to an extent season four. When Derek first met Scott and Styles in the pilot, he didn't know either of them. By that point in time, Eli was already growing inside his mother's womb, so Derek already knew about him before returning back to Beacon Hills. He obviously wouldn't trust Scott and Styles with the information that he has a child on the way, two people he clearly doesn't know yet all that well, and it doesn't make sense logically for him to tell them either. And that is something, in my opinion, I think a lot of people overlook. The same thing can be applied to characters such as Lydia and Jackson as well. Derek didn't know them that well either in the case of Lydia, barely at all, seeing as they rarely had any screen time together, even going into Teen Wolf the movie. People also make the argument that Derek should have told Allison as well. Again, he doesn't know her on top of the fact that her family was literally trying to kill him, including her aunt, mother, and grandfather. And then the final argument I see people make in terms of why Derek didn't tell anyone about Eli's existence is his own family, the Hales, of course. This is more of a personal subject when it comes to Derek because as we are all well aware, most of his family is dead and the only living members he has left 
he either didn't know about or he despised such as Peter. Peter was a figure over time that Derek just couldn't trust, so why in the hell would he tell him about Eli? With Cora, it was a very long time since he last saw her, so obviously that trust would have had to have been built back up over time. Same thing with Malia, he doesn't know her even though she is his cousin. So everything was literally working against Derek, and to finish off this video with the final point I have to make, or the final point I'm trying to make, this man was literally fighting for his life in seasons one, two, three, and four, where he literally died for a few minutes before finishing his evolution process, of course, in the episode Smoke and Mirrors. Enough said. Eli's existence makes 100% sense. Derek loved his son, and we see that on full display in the movie. All he wanted to do was protect him and keep him safe, and he gave up his life in the most heroic sacrifice we've seen in this series to keep his son alive and to make sure that the Hales had a future. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys leave a like. Also, make sure you guys comment all your thoughts and opinions down below. Real quick, before I end this video off, I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons who have been supporting my original book series, True Alpha. The chapters are coming out monthly, but the full book comes out in June. All 15 of you guys who are on there so far, you guys are the best. I love all the support you guys have been showing on Patreon, and I wanted to start shouting you guys out because I feel like you guys deserve the shout outs. I mean, without you, the book would literally have no support. So hopefully more people will start to, you know, flock over to Patreon, support the book series, because I really want it to be something big. And yeah, shout out to all of my patrons who help support the channel through Patreon. I'm Jade. Make sure you guys have a great rest of your day or night whenever you're watching this. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. And when you do, hit that bell icon to set your notifications to all so that you never miss a future Teen Wolf, Wolf Pack, or Teen Wolf movie video from me. I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace, love, positivity as always. Feels so great to say that again. And I'll uh, catch you in the next one. Peace.